the way that communication works is it has four different component parts. So some communication is formal, some is informal. Communication can be subconscious or conscious. And so you get combinations, formal and conscious, informal, subconscious, etc. So if we, if we think about these in each in turn, if we, if we start with the formal conscious transmissions, what are we talking about there? So official communication and you know you're being communicated to. So that would be things like your announcements, your town halls, your briefings, your emails, your memos, your documents, your newsletters, your notice board, all that kind of stuff. And the research says leaders spend about 80 to 85 percent of their time, effort and energy from a communication perspective on this quadrant as their main mechanism for getting their messages out to people. Unfortunately, your staff pay three to five percent attention to this. Mayday, mayday, you're going down. <laughs> so all the energy goes in here and most of it is just washing over people. There's a reason for that, which we'll come back to. Now, if we drop down here into the conscious informal, so now I still know I'm being told things, but the setting is more relaxed. So that would be, you know, your water cooler moments, chats in the corridor, offhand remarks and, and all that stuff. And then you've got the formal subconscious stuff up here, which is actually where all your policy procedure process sits because that's not that's not in a sense conscious communication you bump up against a policy and you sort of work out oh that must matter or you see why somebody gets promoted and you think ah they must be doing the right things and so subconsciously that signals things in culture as do your measures and metrics right the stuff you measure in metric let people know subconsciously what you must value and so that's part of the the recipe too but the interesting bit is down here informal subconscious now what is informal subconscious communication well, essentially, it is behavior, right? And what is behavior? Behavior is what you do. That's all it is. As distinct from what you say, what you do, your actions. Now, the research is clear. Leaders spend about 5 to 7% of their time, effort, and energy thinking about and deliberately planning how they'll use their actions as a communication strategy. Staff pay 85 to 90% attention to this. So there's a direct and inverse correlation between these two quadrants. Simply put, it doesn't really matter what you say unless you do it. You know, you've got to walk the talk, you've got to model the way. And actually, another way of describing this is if you say one thing and do another, the thing that people believe is what you did. So you cancel out the words with the actions. So what they're really getting at here is when the leader is the message. So when I'm modeling the message, that's when you get traction. And actually what people do is too much one quadrant communication. In fact, what they're often doing is drowning people in messages up here. Here's another pamphlet, here's another email, here's another announcement, here's another briefing. And it's just exhausting. And what you'd be better to do is massive surgery in the top left-hand corner, like to the absolutely critical messages and tell people they need to hear that message. But then chat about that same message till you're literally sick fed up of talking about it. Change policies if they get in the way of making it happen and live it with every fiber of your being. And if you do four quadrant communication on less messages, you will get more traction. But the root of this is the leader is the message in a body. You are the message. That's, that's the big idea.